Mr. President, Madam Commissioner, colleagues. The Palestinian people have been living under occupation for more than 50 years and deserves their freedom as all other people. And a well-functioning Palestinian authority with control over the territories is an integral part towards a peaceful solution on the conflict and an end to the Israeli occupation. If I asked anyone in here, in our parliament, please stand up if you would like to be treated as the Palestinian people are, expected to live a decent life under abnormal situation because there is nothing normal with occupation, I can promise you no one here would like to stand up. The freedom of the Palestinian people is also interlinked with the security of the Israeli people. The internationally recognized two-state solutions, according to the 1967 borders with the city of Jerusalem as the capital of both states, remains the best way of bringing lasting peace, stability, security, and equal rights to both people. What I just mentioned should not be controversial for anyone of us in here because it is rooted in international law and the rule-based order that we claim we stand for in many other conflicts. But yet, these recommendations seem to have created a debate above and beyond my understanding in this chamber, in a few EU member states, with disinformation and misinformation and groundless allegations being spread. Colleagues, how controversial can it be to demand an end to corruption and human rights abuses by the Palestinian Authority? How controversial can it be to demand an end to uh, terrorist attacks by actors on both sides, Palestine and Israel? How controversial can it be to demand an end to Israeli occupation and human rights abuses? How controversial can it be to demand from Israeli authorities to stop demolition and confiscation of EU-funded projects that is supposed to go to schools for Palestinian children? And if they continue their activities, every single cent must be paid back to the European taxpayers. How controversial can it be to let International Court of Justice and International Criminal Court to do their job through looking into if war crimes have been committed. How controversial can it be to have a more long-term approach instead of yearly ad hoc cooperation and support to the Palestinian Authority? Remember the last time Commissioner Varheli refused to pay the financial support to the PA based on groundless allegations. It even led to Palestinian people not accessing cancer treatment. In the end, it is it all boils down to how controversial can it be to start treating the Palestinian people as we treat the Israeli people? Or do we believe international law only applies to some, and as Orwell said, some are more equal than others? Peace must be the ultimate goal wherever a conflict appears. Freedom must be the ultimate goal wherever an occupation exists. Life must be the ultimate goal where death is ever present. If we really believe in that, it should not be controversial with voting in favor of the negotiated and compromised text on the recommendations to the Council and the Commission on the relations with the Palestinian Authority and reject any amendments. I just want to remind of, all, of us all in here that we have a duty to pave the way for peace and life, not further polarization and death. Palestinian and Israeli human rights activists and organizations are right now calling on us to adopt these important recommendations. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, now for the Commission, uh, floor is to Commissioner Urpilainen. and floor is yours, Commissioner. President, honourable members of the European Parliament, thank you for the timely opportunity to discuss your report and also to exchange views on our relations with the Palestinian Authority, also on behalf of the HLBP. 
Let me start by updating you on the situation on the ground, which is of great concern. The security situation continues to deteriorate, leading to deplorable numbers of Palestinian and Israeli victims. This year alone, the number of Palestinians killed in confrontations with the IDF in the West Bank, including East Jerusalem, has more than doubled compared to the same period last year, to more than 130, including at least 22 children, in addition to five Palestinians killed and large-scale destruction of property by Israeli settlers. The number of Israelis killed by Palestinian perpetrators has also increased to 31 compared to 28 in the same period last year, with many more injured on both sides. We are also witnessing an alarming increase of demolitions, evictions and settlement expansion with around 13,000 new settlement units announced in the occupied West Bank approved by Israel in the past six months alone, and new administrative procedures to expedite settlement expansion. We have urged Israel not to proceed with these measures, which are illegal under international law. All these developments only serve to fuel the cycle of violence that has accelerated the, to alarming levels in recent months. The EU has reacted publicly on several occasions, including the recent military operation in Jenin and terrorist attacks in Israel and the West Bank. It is clear that the only way to break out of this vicious cycle is a return to effective security cooperation between the Palestinian Authority and Israel, but we know from experience that the security track cannot, separate, cannot be separated from the political track. Remote as it may look today, there is no viable alternative to the two-state solution, and the longer it takes, the more difficult it will become. With this in mind, we are working through our EU Special Representative for the Middle East peace process to revive peace efforts with regional partners, in particular Saudi Arabia and the League of Arab States. Now I would like to turn to the title of this debate, Our Relations with the Palestinian Authority. Thirty years since its creation by the Oslo Accords, the Palestinian Authority is facing unprecedented financial and political challenges. Financially, the Palestinian Authority is struggling to maintain its public finances and provide services to the population. We heard alarming messages at the Ad Hoc Liaison Office Committee, with the EU, which EU, the EU hosted in May. The EU remains the largest donor to the Palestinian people with projects and in the interventions that cover almost all aspects of Palestinian life. These are in line with the Palestinian reform agenda and aim at promoting Palestinian state building. In December 2022, so last December, the Commission adopted its 2022 annual action plan in favour of Palestine for a total amount of 186 million euros. As part of our multi-annual support to United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees in the Near East, our 2023 contribution of 82 million was front-loaded at the beginning of this year. Other donors need to step in as well while the Palestinian Authority needs also to urgently continue its financial reforms to steer towards calmer waters. We recall that Israel also needs to respect signed agreements and take the necessary measures that would ease the Palestinians' financial pressures. Politically, 
the Palestinian Authority is also facing inter internal challenges. We are witnessing increasingly negative trends as regards rule of law and fundamental freedoms in areas where the Palestinian Authority is in control and in Gaza. A stronger and more credible Palestinian Authority as a partner is in everyone's interest. And this is why the EU continues to urge to hold the overdue national elections as soon as possible. This is important for strengthening the legitimacy of the Palestinian Authority for the Palestinian people. In January, the HRVP invited Palestinian Prime Minister to the Foreign Affairs Council meeting. We agreed to establish a regular political dialogue at ministerial level. We are planning to have the first such dialogue with the Palestinian counterpart in the autumn. We also agreed to work towards establishing partnership priorities between the EU and the Palestinian Authority in the context of the European neighborhood policy. Both will be important steps forward in our political relations. Thank you very much and looking forward to the debate. Well, the